have power. Words have the power to tear down or to build up. Words can bring great comfort or tremendous pain. Words when said are out there. They're like dandelion seeds blowing in the wind. You can't really take what you say back. And sometimes we don't even realize the words that we use do hurt others, nor do we always intend for words to hurt. I mean, sometimes we do, but a lot of times we don't. And sometimes we can also use the words that others use to tear us down and reclaim them, bringing us power instead. Then there he set out and went away to the region of Tyree. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Seraphonician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. In our gospel text for today, we see a different side of Jesus than we normally picture Jesus to be. So in here, Jesus is trying to hide from people. He's just come from telling the Pharisees and the scribes things that they didn't want to hear, that what comes out of a person is what defiles them, as in their thoughts, their words, their deeds, rather than the things that they eat. And so he leaves and he goes to this place to lay low for a little bit. He just, he doesn't want to be around people. But wouldn't you know it, someone shows up for his help. And not just any someone, but a woman, a Gentile woman, a Seraphonician woman. So a woman who is from the Syrian area. And she begs Jesus to help her daughter who was possessed by an unclean spirit. And Jesus' response, he calls her a dog. And not just any dog, but a little dog, a puppy. And he says, it's not right to take the children's food and give it to the little dogs. Wow, can we just sit with that for a moment? I mean, of all the things for Jesus to say, it reminds me of a time a few years ago when someone called me young lady as a term of belittlement rather than endearment, which particularly irritated me. And Jesus just talked down to this woman who's trying to help her daughter. Now, to give Jesus a little grace, I'm sure he was frustrated. He was trying to hide from people and this woman comes who's not one of his followers and begs him to help her. And so I get it when you're trying to get a break and then someone comes and asks you for help while you're taking said break, it's hard because you absolutely want to help, but you're also like, can I just not for a little bit? But okay, so Jesus tells her, we don't give our table food to the puppies. And this woman has an absolutely boss answer back to Jesus. She says, even the puppies under the table eat the children's crumbs. You know, just because you might not give them food directly doesn't mean that they won't be resourceful and get the food themselves. Just because you won't help doesn't mean that they'll give up. Essentially, she's telling Jesus, one way or another, I will get my daughter healed. Just try and stop me. And Jesus says, you're bold. You're determined. You have faith because of this determination, because you're not backing down, because you are fighting for your daughter, because you have faith, she is healed. And she was. So our topic for these three weeks is letting go of perfectionism, cultivating compassion. And this happens in a few ways in this text. So this woman, the Seraphonician woman, who's not named, but she's nonetheless an important enough figure to be mentioned in two of the Gospels. 
she is absolutely letting go of perfectionism. She let go of the need to follow all the rules that dictated the proper etiquette of being a respectful woman at that time. And she focused on her job as a mother to advocate for her child. And you know, she did not insult Jesus when she spoke to him. It, but instead she was compassionate with herself. She reclaimed the phrase that Jesus said to her, the, the insult that he gave her. And instead she turned it not into an insult. She used it to empower her. She pushed back. It reminds me of when the prophets of the Old Testament pushed back on things that God told them. And people were okay with that. We just don't expect a Gentile woman to push back at God. And yet here she is persisting. And quite honestly, it's a beautiful thing. There's actually a lot of power in letting go of the need to be perfect, in not allowing the words that others use in an attempt to tear us down achieve their goal, but instead reclaiming them and allowing ourselves to be who we were created to be. So, you know, Pastor Chad and I both joked about how we're nerds in our own ways. The thing is, when I was a teen and a young adult, I did let those words hurt. I did everything in my power to portray perfection to the world, and I had a hard time being compassionate to myself. And to be honest, it's still kind of a struggle at times. But at the same time, I've learned that reclaiming the words that others use to tear us down and make us think that we are not worthy is being compassionate for ourselves, and it's also very freeing. So it's also important to acknowledge that when you feel like you have no other options, it is easier to let go of perfectionism, to let go of the labels that others have placed on you. I'm just curious, what might it look like for us if instead of letting it get to that point, that point of no return, that point of we're at the bottom, we're at rock bottom and we can't do anything but let go, what if we let go of that need to be perfect before that point? What if we were confident in who we are as people? And if we were willing to be compassionate to ourselves and those we love before we get to that no return point? If we did it all the time? If instead of insulting people we don't agree with or don't like or resorting to name calling or belittling, we instead listened, like really listened to what a person had to say and we were compassionate with them. So this is the gospel in this story. God's love knows no limit and bounds. God's love is for everyone. I don't think it's out of line for us to do a double take when we hear Jesus call this woman a little dog, a puppy, and essentially tells her to shoo. And as it happens in other stories of the Bible, the least expected of them all takes a stand and speaks truth to power to God. This woman spoke truth to power to Jesus. And it's just as much a reminder to Jesus as it is to all of us that God's love is for everyone, not just for some, not just for those who fit the mold. And it is okay to let go of the fear of not doing the perfect thing, the thing that others expect of us, and instead do the right thing. Because really, what is perfect? A picture on social media that's been airbrushed and edited to the point where it doesn't even look like the person anymore? Is that what perfect is? Maybe perfect isn't necessarily true and right. And maybe the right thing, the true thing, is the compassionate thing. And maybe that's part of what this story and the story of God is all about. Thanks be to God for God's grace 
and God's compassion to all of us. Amen. So a couple of reflection questions for you to use to go deeper into the message, however you want to use them. The first is think of something a person has called you to insult you. How can you reclaim that word, that phrase, whatever it is, to empower you rather than have it tear you down? And the second, what do you or the world consider to be perfect? Is that ver version of perfection always right? Mm -hmm. 